2 Samuel chapter number 6. We'll begin reading in verse number 12. The Bible says, And it was told King David, saying, The Lord hath blessed the house of Obed-Eden, and all that pertaineth unto him, because of the ark of God. So David went and brought up the ark of God from the house of Obed-Edom into the city of David with gladness. And it was so that when they that bear the ark of the Lord had uh, gone six paces, he sacrificed oxen and fatlings. And David danced before the Lord with all his might, and David was girded with a linen ephod. So David and all the house of Israel brought up the ark of the Lord with shouting and with the sound of the trumpet. And as the ark of the Lord came into the city of David, Michael, Saul's daughter, looked through a window and saw King David leaping and dancing before the Lord, and she despised him in her heart. Let me just stop right here. I'm not really going to comment too much on Michael in the message, but let me just tell you something about this woman. This woman is exactly what the world thinks of you and I when we worship. They have no problem going to a Bengals game or a Wildcats game and shouting their lungs out, but if you come here and you say amen a little bit, you get a little animated, you get a little excited, uh, they despise us. Mm, you know what? I'm going to go home and take two baby aspirins and worry about that all night, really. I don't care, huh? But look at verse 17. And they brought in the ark of the Lord and set it in his place. You ought to underscore that right there. It didn't say set it in its place. His place. Because the ark is a true picture of the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm, it goes on to say, In the midst of the tabernacle that David had pitched for it, and David offered burnt offerings and peace offerings before the Lord. Let's pray. Father, we love you. Thank you for the good singing. God, thank you for the good congregational singing. Thank you for all those up here on the platform picking instruments. Lord, it's a blessing. Lord, it's good to see nods and Aaron up there just to picking and playing. God, uh, we just thank you for being so good to our church with all the talent and all those that can sing and those that can play and those that want to participate. What a blessing. God, thank you for the good testimonies. God, all the theme of it all is that you're a good God. We bless your holy name. Lord, uh, why you ever saved us, we'll never know. Why you went to Calvary for us, we'll never know. But Lord, we can say thank you and blessed be the name of the Lord. Uh, now, Father, I pray you'd help us for the next few minutes. Give us a little thought you gave us. I pray folks get some help, some encouragement. And I certainly pray you'd bless the baptismal service to follow. And we'll thank you and praise you for what you do. For it's in the holy and wonderful name of Jesus we ask these things. Amen and amen. I want to draw your attention to several things tonight. I want to, first of all, let you see the report that David got. Verse number 12 says, And it was told King David, saying, The Lord hath blessed the house of Obed-Edom. Now, if we'd have read the first part of the chapter, you'd find that David desired to bring the ark of God to where it rightly belonged to the city of David. And uh, his zeal to do something for God is commendable, but he went about it in the wrong way. And can I say there are a lot of people that have a desire to do something for the Lord, but they go about it in the wrong way. And those of you that know the Scriptures know that David sent down and they brought out a new cart, uh, pulled by oxen, put the ark on the cart, uh, headed toward the city of David. Uh, 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 the cart hit a, a pothole, if you will, uh, uh, the ark shifted, uh, a fellow put his hand on the ark and he died instantly and David was discouraged. Uh, here he thinks he's doing something for God uh, and so uh, right where they were there uh, 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 was by Obed-Edom's house and they put the ark in his house uh, and for the next three months God blesses his house uh, because the ark was there. Uh, can I uh, help you with something? Whenever the Lord's in your house, uh, you've got a blessed home. Amen. Uh, uh, what David did not realize is that the ark uh, was to be born with staves on shoulders of men and carried uh, where it was supposed to go. Uh, well, David gets over to the pooch mouth, realizes he did wrong, uh, and he gets a report uh, that God's a blessing down there at Obed-Edom's house. I want you to notice, second of all, his response. Look what happens in verse number 12 again. Uh, so David went and brought up the ark of God. Hmm? 
he heard God was a blessing, and he says, you know what? I want the blessings. Uh, and he went and he got the ark. Uh, what a blessing. We see the report, the response, uh, and then notice the returning. Uh, uh, it said that he went and brought up the ark of God from the house of Obed-Edom into the city of David with gladness. Uh, 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 so we see he gets a report. Uh, he responds, uh, and uh, 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 he returns the ark to where it needs to be. Uh, uh, can I say uh, uh, what preaching ought to do? We ought to get a report from the Word of God, uh, a report from heaven. Uh, we ought to respond, uh, and we ought to return uh, uh, and get our hearts right with God, and we too be filled with gladness. Uh, but I want you to see something else. Notice the rejoicing. You see, when we respond and do what God wants us to do in the proper way, you can't help but rejoice. Hmm? Notice, if you will, verse number 14. The Bible says, And David danced before the Lord with all his might. I know good Baptists aren't supposed to dance. But you get f as full of God as David is at this point, you, you're going you're gonna to get a little uh, rhythm in your feet too, huh? Uh, said, And David danced with all his might, and David was girded with a linen ephod. So David and all the house of Israel brought up the ark of the Lord with shouting, uh, and with the sound of the, trump, of the trumpet. So we see the rejoicing. Now, let me bring out three things. We'll get to the thought tonight. I want you to notice three things about David in returning this ark to the city of David. First of all, I want you to notice that David sacrificed. Look at verse 13. And it was so that when they bear the ark, notice it's not on a cart now, he learned his lesson. They bear the ark of the Lord, and had gone six paces, he sacrificed oxen and fatlings. I'm going to show you why David danced before the Lord. Now get a hold of this. They got the ark. It's on staves. They're carrying it from Obed-Edom's house to the city of David. And now the Bible says that they would go six paces. They'd stop. And David would offer up sacrifices of oxen and fatlings. Now can I say one pace was five feet. So every 30 feet, he would stop, build an altar, sacrifice oxen and fatlings, and would offer them on the altar until they were consumed. Then they would go six more paces, another 30 feet and do it over and over and over again. Can I say it was five miles from Gibeah, where the Ark of the Covenant was, to Jerusalem. David offered up 1,760 offerings per mile. That was 8,800 sacrifices in all. Now, my dear friends, you get to where you're offering up something to God 8,800 times, where every 30 feet you stop and worship God and pay a price to worship God, my dear friends, by the time you get to where you're going, you're going to be shouting and leaping and praising God too. Now think about this. I don't know where you live, but think about if you stopped every 30 feet, got out and worshiped God on your way to church. Hmm? Jim and Judy coming from Berea, I saw you better leave the day before. And you're closer than Bob and Sonny. Where are they sitting? What, you, you moved on me. Where's Bob and Sonny? You're back row Christians. What are you doing over here? I didn't even... <laughs> no wonder you can't find your Bible, Miss Sonny. She lost her Bible around here somewhere today because it's sitting where you're supposed to sit, probably. I don't know. But imagine coming from Hoosierville every 30 feet. I mean, your car don't even get revved up for 30 feet. Every 30 feet you stopped, got out of your car, and worshiped God and praised Him for His goodness. Huh? Think about it. By the time you got here, bless God, uh, I mean, you'd kick the doors, you'd come in, you'd leap and praise God a little bit yourself. Uh, you'd have a little bit of worship on you yourself. You see, that's what He did. Uh, uh, most of the time, people don't even get up and pray for the service, let alone worship on the way here. You know what would be good for us uh, on our way to church? Uh, if we get our mind on God, uh, if we start praising Him, we start worshiping Him, everything about uh, our, our journey here is about the Lord and come hungering and thirsting for God. 
we see that he sacrificed. I want you to notice that David was sold out. Look with me again in verse number 14. It said, And David danced before the Lord with all his might. Here it is. And David was girded with a linen ephod. Now, linen ephod was a girdle around his loins, which was the base fabric that you could find. Anybody could have had a linen ephod. Now, could I say, David put off his kingly robes and kingly apparel for the base things. He didn't come in thumping his chest saying, I'm the king. He came in in a base, humility state. Hmm? Did not John the Baptist say, I must decrease and he must increase? Yep. You know, if we'd quit trying to, uh, you know, worrying about uh, trying to impress people and uh, 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 quit worrying about what people think about us, uh, and we just humble ourselves before God, uh, and uh, we get sold out to the honor and glory of God, uh, there's no telling what God will do in our midst. We see sacrifice. He sold out. He took off that priestly apparel, and he put on humble apparel. Um, but notice also David shouted her out. Look at verse number 15. So David... And all the house of Israel brought up the ark of the Lord with shouting and with the sound of the trumpet. Hmm? They just shouted her out. Hmm? It's good when we get in a good old-fashioned meeting, isn't it? We just shout her out. Hmm? Uh, I mean, all we're talking about is the Lord Jesus Christ and His goodness. I mean, there's, there's something to shout about, huh? What I'd like to focus on is in verse 14. The Bible said, And David danced before the Lord, and here's what I want you to look at. With all his might. I'm going to preach with God's help on just a little, little thought tonight on with all his might. I'm glad you're here tonight. I'm glad so many of you are so faithful to serve the Lord. But I have a question for you. Do you serve the Lord with all your might? Do you honor the Lord with all your might? Well, think about that. David, with all his might, worshipped God. You see, after probably the third or fourth time they stopped and offered up sacrifice on the way there, he lost all sight of the ark. Now his sight's on glory. His sight's on the Lord himself. And by the time they got to the city of David, he's leaping, praising God, worshiping, having himself a fit because he's done it with all his might. I got to thinking about what that means. I mean, he worshiped with all his might. What does that phrase mean? Let me give you a few definitions of what all his might means. It means using all his strength. Not some of his strength, not what he could afford, not what he thought would be enough. All his strength. Let me ask you, have you used all your strength to worship God today? Hmm? Hmm. Uh, we was last week down there at Brother Bobby Cato's preaching, and I was literally wrung out after every service. Preached with everything I had. I'm not a young man anymore. I don't bounce back as quick as I used to. When you give it all your strength, it's apparent. It not only affects you, it affects those around you. Have you worshipped today with all your strength? See, a lot of times we, we give God what we can afford to give God or what we think we can afford to give God. Very seldom do we give him all. Have you given him all your strength? Not only does all his might mean using all his strength, it also means as hard as he could. Have you worshipped the Lord as hard as you could today? Hmm? Hmm. How many has ever ran before? A sprint? If you're in a competition, you run as hard as you can run. If you're not in a competition, you just run. Can I say that we're, we're contending for souls? Are you going as hard as you can? 
Do you worship as hard as you can? Or are you just satisfied just coasting along? Hmm? I thought about this. All his might means with all his heart. Now here's a good litmus test for whether or not you put all your heart into worshiping today. Why you been here? Has your mind been somewhere else? Hmm. Have you been thinking about what's going on in the job or what you got to get at the grocery store or what's going on at school or what's going on here or what's going on there? Or, what's going on, or have you put your whole heart into being here today? I'm not a surgeon. Lord knows I wouldn't make a good one. First time I cut somebody, I'd pass out. Huh? Listen, I've been over at Bob and Sonny's and see that big rack that they hang the deer up that they cut in half. I'm thinking, I'm about to pass out thinking about that rack being up there. You know what I'm saying? But listen, I don't want a surgeon cutting on me that only does it half-hearted. I don't want a surgeon cutting on me that is just going through the motions. Now think about it. You used to be in the insurance business. He's got malpractice insurance. If he messes me up, he's, it's not coming out of his pocket. I want a surgeon cutting on me that puts his whole heart into it. Hmm? Huh? I had that cancer operation. Hey, you know what hooked me up with that guy when he said this? If I do my job properly, he's never going to need rent, or it's never coming back. I said, sign me up. I swear that Ferrari in the parking lot was his, you know. <laughs> he was a cocky dude, and that's who I want cutting on me. Uh, somebody puts their heart into it. I wonder tonight, have we put our heart into it? Kids, when you sang, did you put your whole heart into it, or did you just get up and sing? Hmm? I was watching some of you, some of you just singing from your heart. And I was watching some of the other ones, and you just singing. There's a difference. Hmm. Some of y'all sitting in the pews, and your little darling was singing, you was into it. When Brother James was singing, you wasn't. I know he's not as cute, but he was still singing about Jesus. Hmm. I thought about this. David worshiped with all his might. That means with everything he had. What separates champions from good athletes? Champions give it all they've got. Most of the time, the champions aren't the most talented. They're the ones, though, that just give that extra little bit. Hmm. Pete Rose was not the best baseball player that ever played the game. He didn't have much of an arm. He wasn't that fast. He wasn't built like a baseball player. But you know what he could do? He could hit the ball. He gave it all he had. When he hung up the cleats, he got more hits than anybody that's ever played the game. Hmm. I believe if you talk to him, he'd just tell you he gave it all he had. Hmm. Hmm. There had been a lot more talented people put on a Cincinnati Reds uniform. You don't even remember their names. Hmm? Can I say there have been a lot of Christians serve God that you don't know their names. But you know what separates them from men like Pray and Hyde? Pray and Hyde gave it all he had. You might not know about him. He was a missionary to India. I got a book about Pray and Hyde. Got to reading it. And I threw it down. Miss Nett come walking by. She said, what's wrong with you? I said, that book's what's wrong with me. You see, Pray and Hyde prayed so much. It was his burden to win somebody to God every day. And if he didn't win somebody to God today, that means he had to win two tomorrow. But he prayed so much, and he was so intent in his prayer, that his heart was actually dislodging from where it normally is, and it was moving because the muscles in his chest was forming to where it was pushing his heart out of where it's supposed to be. And the doctors told him, said, you've got to quit praying that way or it's going to kill you. He said, blessed be the name of the Lord. He went to heaven, known as praying Hyde, gave it all he had. 
Hmm? I wonder, have we given it all we have? Hmm? I told Miss Annette back six weeks ago, we probably shouldn't say this. People just started calling me, wanting me to come preach revivals, and calling me, wanting to preach here, and wanting to preach, and I'm still getting calls to preach. I told her this. I said, "Well, this is either the start of something big, or this is my last hoorah." She said, "Why well, you say that?" I said, "I don't know. I just can't feel that way." But if it is my swan song, I want to go out, giving it all I had. It's been taxing the last six weeks. It's been taxing not sleeping in my bed, not eating my wife's cooking, not being in my office on you know the days that I'm here in my office. It's been taxing not sleeping, not resting, putting my body through all the miles and through all the hardships and all those things. But can I help you something? Wouldn't trade it for nothing. Because we've seen folks saved and folks helped and folks have gotten help around here and God's been good. But I wonder... Have we really given it all? Or are we holding back? Hmm? I mean, he gave everything he had. With all his might meant holding back nothing. I know preachers my age talking about retiring. I'm thinking, man, now's the time to kick it in high gear. Back of those that run track, when you get around that last turn, that's when you kick it in. You give it all you got to get to the finish line. It's not time to coast. I told somebody, I believe I got another 20 years left in me before I have to think about retiring. Huh? That'd put me Brother Jim's age. Huh? What are you holding back for? Some of you come to church and you want to testify, but you're thinking, well, what will people think? What are you holding back for? It's not about anybody in here. When you testify, you're just proclaiming what Jesus means to you. Why are you holding back? Huh? Some say, well, I would, I would say amen, but what will people think of me? Who cares? What are you holding back for? Hmm? I don't know whether you realize this or not. Time is fleeing away. We're going to do something. better do it now. Let me ask you a few questions. I'll be done. With all this might. Do you pray with all your might? Do you sing with all your might? I wish you could stand here during the choir singing when I say, all right, sing her out now. And Bella's sitting right there. She's singing to the top of her lungs. Uh, if I had hair, it would part when Bella starts singing. <laughs> but she's singing it out. And I'm thinking... Hallelujah. I wish everybody loved singing in the choir and loved coming to church like that little girl does. Hmm. Do you sing with all your might? No, you sing. Victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me, he bought me. David worshiped with all his might. Hmm. Do you listen? with all your might not only to preaching do you listen to the testimonies do you listen to the words of the songs Whoever, do you listen with all your might very intently some of you miss a lot because you're not listening hmm? do you exalt Jesus with all your might Now, there's some of you in here, if I say something about Kentucky Wildcats, you'll get all excited. There's a couple of you in here, if I say something about the Louisville Cardinals, you'll get all excited. Do you exalt Jesus with that much fervor? Hmm? Boy, some of you talk about fishing, some of you talk about hunting, some of you talk about... And I understand, it's good to have outlets, and it's good to have... A release, and there's nothing wrong with being a cardinal or a cat fan. There's nothing wrong with fishing and hunting and enjoying life. Nothing wrong with that. But all that ought to pale in comparison to what Jesus means to you. Do you serve with all your might? When was the last time you did anything for Jesus with all your might? 
Tomorrow night we'll have visitation. We'll have some folks show up. You got to watch these kids in these neighborhoods passing out tracks. It it puts us to shame. Hmm. I just sit back and rejoice, watching them, excited about giving out the gospel to somebody. Hmm. Let me ask you this: Do you encourage others with all your might? Truth be told, a lot of people come to church; they just want people to make over them. When's the last time you made over somebody else? When's the last time you encouraged somebody else? When was the last time you was a blessing to somebody else? You gotta encourage with all your might. I thought about this. Do we witness with all our might? And much has been said today. Do we endure with all our might? Paul said, endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. I wonder, do we really do it with all our might? You know why I'm not rung out tonight preaching? Because you didn't come to worship with all your might. You know why I got rung out at Brother Bobby's and rung out at Brother Stacy's? Those people were sitting on the edge of their seat waiting to hear what God had to say. And you are sitting back, relaxed, because you didn't put all your might into it. Oh, you're here, thank the Lord. But that's mostly what could be said about us. We're here. I saw this quote today, and I, I pinned it down. It said, some boast that they'll go to jail for their faith. Really? Many won't even go to church for their faith. A lot of truth in that. Don't tell folks how much you love Jesus. Show them how much you love Jesus. David wasn't doing anything to make a spectacle of himself. He was just doing all that he could with all his might, and it got all over him. And I say, when we do it with all our might, it gets all over us too. Remember how excited you was at camp meeting? How come you wasn't that excited today? Same Jesus. Same Bible being preached. Same good godly songs being sung. So what's changed? I think we know the answer. With all our might. You know what would make a difference? Just doing it with all our might. Don't do it half-hearted. Do it all. With all your heart. I wonder tonight. Are we ready to get serious about this thing? Do it with all our might. I want to tell you something. It'll cause people to talk about you. It'll cause people to despise you. It'll cause you to get wore out. I imagine David slept real good that night. It'll also cause you to get bloody. He slayed a lot of animals. You're going to get your hands dirty. Hmm? But when it's said and done, all said and done, the Lord recorded that in the scriptures because it honored God. And what's he recording about you and I that will be revealed when the books are open? God help us. Word to be said of us. We did it with all our might. And I wonder tonight. God spoke to your heart. Well, why don't you go to the altar with all your might? Let's all stand. Brother, Brother Ray, come get a song of invitation. While they're coming, let's pray. Father, we love you. God, forgive us because most of the time we don't serve you, worship you, pray, do anything with all our might. Father, forgive us because our spiritual experience will never be higher than how low we get before you. Lord, I pray we'd learn to truly worship you because of the goodness of God. Now, Father, speak to hearts now. Somebody might need to be encouraged. Send somebody to go encourage them with all their might. Somebody might need, Lord, to come and 
confess some things to you. Help them to do it with all their might. Somebody might need to come and thank you. Help them to do that with all their might. Lord, somebody might need to sing this invitational song with all their might. Lord, help us to make up our minds. If we're going to do it for the Lord, we're going to give it all we got. And Father, we'll thank you and praise you for what you do. Bless now in this invitation. Speak to hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Did you know that IBC is now on iTunes, TuneIn, SoundCloud, and Google Play? Head on over to your podcast provider and subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.